high frequency channel where source and spirit meet in tandem, where forces between the mind, body, and spirit meet in friendship, while building a unity of energy and creation, fluidity in consciousness, where we let our spirits speak. All right, folks, uh, another episode of The Raven's Den. Yes, guys, uh, I am your host, Reverend Raven Nightclaw HP. And we actually have the very talented and gifted <laughs> musician, Gina Lamont. So today, as the etheric forecast goes, we've got some interesting stuff happening here, folks. Okay, we got some really interesting things happening here. Uh, we got here, the Schumann Resonance is actually at a mid-peak. Uh, it's between uh, 29 and about 38. Uh, the peak is going to slow down at about 11 p.m. Uh, this evening, UTC. Uh, the planetary alignments right now, uh, Jupiter, Neptune, and Venus, as well as Mars, uh, is in Pisces. Saturn is in Aquarius and Pluto. Scorpio's, you know, Scorpio moon uh, is now in Capricorn. So there's going to be a lot of hills and valleys, a lot of roller coasters. Energy is going to be crazy for the next couple of days, folks. So you just got to make sure that you stay grounded, you meditate, okay, and you bring all, everything into center and into balance. Now for the solar flares, okay, they're pretty high right now, guys, and they're going to be high for a couple of days. All right, right now, uh, the C-class, uh, flares are at 99%. Woo! Okay, talking about burning up my eyebrows. Um, now, the M class, <laughs> the, the M class uh, solar flares right now are, are at a high 60% as well. Uh, so, if you notice anything with your electronics, uh, anything that's going on with like cable, internet, uh, you know, technology, all those types of, you know, doodads and whatchamacallits, uh, you know, that's the reason why everything is going to be messing up uh, for the next couple of days. All right, so to get to this, to get to the show, uh, Gina Lamont is yes, is a musician. She is a, uh, an intuitive. She is also a tarot a tarot reader, a very good one at that, from what I've heard. Um, and we're going to uh, we're going to talk a little bit today. Uh, so, how's it going, Gina? It's going great. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm looking forward to our chat, and I really love your. Um, you're uh, talking about solar flares and all of that kind of stuff because it validates what, you know, what, how I feel a lot of days. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, to begin this beautiful journey, uh, let's talk about your story. Okay, let's uh, start that. Let's start from there first. Um, but before that, um, I have a couple of places where people can find you. And, and find your content okay as well as your music uh it says here uh it is mama gina music.com okay again guys that is mama gina music.com also mama gina dot band camp dot com okay so we may repeat that you know a couple yeah, of times absolutely absolutely okay so uh you know what we're gonna go with the flow here Okay, let's let's pause for some reason. Spirit is making me pause on the story part. Um, what they what <laughs> what is really going on is your passions. I want to hear about your passions. I want to hear about your purpose. I want to hear about your direction. Okay, let's go with that first. Okay, so um, I I am a musician and I travel. Uh, didn't travel for the last couple of years, obviously, but I'm getting ready to head back out on the road. And um, for the last. I'd say 12 years as I've been doing a solo musician thing in the pagan slash metaphysical slash alternative community, uh, playing a lot of festivals and things like that. Oh, nice. I had a mission statement and that I, I developed, a, you know, I, I came from, I, I, I worked in corporate for a while when I was raising my son. And when I decided to um, come, come out, back out on the road, when my son was old enough to leave, <laughs> Right. You never leave your kids, but you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. I am. Um, I felt like, yeah, leaves the nest. <laughs> there you go. Yay. But um, I felt like I needed a direction. I needed a North Star. And so I thought, you know, the whole idea of corporate 
mission statement some, sometimes seems really hokey, but right. I developed one for me and it was about making people feel things. Ooh. I wanted people to feel something when they heard my music or when they picked up a piece of my wearable art. You know, I make cloaks and I do kind of little tiny artsy things. Right. And so I wanted people to feel something emotionally. And the biggest thing that anybody could tell me after a concert was, you made me cry or you made me laugh or I I felt that in my soul, you know, I, I went on that trip with you kind of thing. Right. And that has been an incredible mission statement for all of these years. It's, it's guided me completely. And I've been happy with it. In the last couple of years, as we walked through COVID, I felt, um, well, I had to, I had to do some pivots. I had to learn how to record. I needed to learn to do a lot of other things in order to continue being a musician. Oh, absolutely. Right. Yeah. And I realized that still at the core of everything was being creative, was being the creative being that I am, uh, self-motivating through that creativity, because we don't all do that. Sometimes we just get lazy and it gets too hard, right? Yep. It gets too hard to be creative. Wouldn't it just be easier to go like be a greeter at some big box store, right? Um, <laughs> which will probably never happen to me because I wouldn't hold that job for five minutes anyway. But I felt like creativity was becoming the center of my work, not making other people feel their emotions so much as inspiring them to unearth all of that self for themselves and to be aware of their own creation stories, to be aware of their power of creativity um, and to be, and to create consciously in their lives. Cause I think we're all masters at creativity. It's Agreed. just, most of us, most of us don't know what we're doing. We've put in the hours. Some of us have created complete nonsense in our lives. Yeah. Right. And we're not conscious about it. And so I wanted to bring this idea of conscious creation to the people who I interact with and, and help them become more aware of their own power, help them feel things. Yes, but not just feel things and not just react to what I'm bringing to them, but to be proactive in their lives. And so now when I do concerts, whether it's online or like I'm getting ready to go back out full time on the road, right. it's built into workshops that I present, whether I am teaching tarot or whether I'm talking about Kabbalah in some way, or if I'm just doing a drum meditation early in the mornings with everybody, I constantly am refocusing directing them not just to react to the workshop or to the concert that I'm doing, but reminding them that they hold their own power and they can create consciously. And I, that's become my focus. I mean, it's, that is where my passion is right now is, is reminding people and, and hopefully giving them tools, mm. you know, to, to find, to find their, you know, to, to iterate their, their purpose. purpose. Yeah. Yeah and their purpose well yeah. uh, now i i got a question you you brought you brought up something very specific and for those who don't know what this means kabbalah <laughs> what, i mean what, can you explain briefly like what it what it is to live in, you know in that essence I, I think that that's probably different for everybody okay um i was i i had been a student of tarot for about a decade early on in my life. Mm -hmm. And I had a wonderful mentor. He's gone now from this plane, but I had a wonderful mentor who kept directing me to study Kuala. Mm. And I kept telling him, ain't gonna happen. Isn't that that language that has no vowels? I just, I had, doesn't have anything to do with tarot. Why am I, why would I wanna study this crazy thing? And he would just, he would just back off and say, yep, yep, you're right. Don't study it. And I finally, it finally started invading my life. Uh, books would fall off of bookshelves in front of me in a bookstore. Um, the tarot deck that I actually, not the first one that I ever had, but the one that made me a tarot reader. We, we talked before the show about how you get a connection with a deck, right? Absolutely. Um, I found this deck. I had no idea what I had in my hands. And the first time I met my mentor in person, years later, 
after we had those first early conversations, he said, let me, let me see your deck for just a minute. Cause he had asked me for a reading, you know, kind of push my buttons and see where I was at. Cast you out. Yeah. Right, right, right. And that was all cool. Um, but he said, look, can I see your deck again? And the deck I have, um, and I still use to this day. And I got that deck in 1993. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so he takes my deck and he pulls a card at random from out of the deck and drops it on the table. And he points at something on the, on the and it's very kind of watercolory, kind of gorgeous, dreamy deck, right? right? And he drops it on the table and he points at something and he says, what's that? And I go, it's a squiggly line. And he said, it's a Yud, it's, it's a Hebrew letter that might have something to do with Kabbalah, but that can't be because it's on your deck and Tara and Kabbalah have nothing to do with each other. He was really pu pushing my buttons. Right. And I kind of, huh, you know, and he says, wait, wait, before you pick up your cards, let's do this again. At random, he pulls out another card and drops it on the table and says, well, what's that? And I go, two squiggly lines and he says <laughs> it's a lamed it's another um hebrew letter has something to do with kabbalah and at that point i was like you son of a gun right um i went home and really started reading reading the kabbalah right reading reading all of these books about kabbalah and i think i spent about six months and i'm a voracious reader um right. I was reading all this stuff wrong. I mean, I was just like reading it through and not applying anything. And at the end of six months and about 30 books, I just drunkenly emailed him one night and yeah. said, this is all just crap. This doesn't make any sense at all to me. Oh, I, I feel that. Um, yeah. you know, I, I feel a lot because when, when I saw, well, now again, I know not a lot about the Kabbalah, you know, the Kabbalah itself. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've read the Quran. I've read, you know, I read the Bible. I read the Witch's Bible. You know, I, I even, which is pr probably horrible for some people, and they probably have their own opinions about it. Right, right, right. You know, open up the Necronomicon. You know, stuff like that. You know, from Anton LaVey and stuff like that. Where again, it's books. And so you yeah. know, reading about other people's culture and religions and stuff like that. Um, I noticed that with a Kabbalah, I, I, I'm, I'm, you know, is there a difference? I've seen a couple of different words which I was, I'm, I'm still confused a little bit still to this, to this day, because there's Kabbalah, mm -hmm. which is Q, or is it K? I know where you're going with this. Okay, because I, because again, I've seen Kabbalion, which is <laughs> K-Y. Kabbalion, yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, okay, where the seven hermetic laws you know, came that's that's a, a different system. Um, the Kabbalion uh, comes out of a different um, a, a different part of the planet. However, the underlying principles is pretty much are, the same, right. Yeah, because because you know we we are all human, in, you know, in spiritual, and there are just some overlying principles. So Kabbalah. There's no, it, first of all, it's a mystical, it's, um, mysticism, right? it's, it's Jewish. It's originally it's, it's Jewish right. mysticism. Right. Um, right. yes. And, uh, it's, it, there is no, um, exact way to go from spelling in, um, in Hebrew or in Aramaic or in any of those things to English. And so a K sound might be a K, it might be a Q, it might be a C. It might be a C, right. What we found, what it, an L might be one L, it might be two Ls. The B might be one B, it might be two Bs, right? right? And so you see all of these different things. One of the things that has happened is as books have been written over the last few centuries is that you often see the C spelling of out of a uh, Christian Kabbalistic yes, I, I've saying. seen yes we often wind up using a, a Q for the hermetic Kabbalistic which is the magical which has been hermetic is mixed up right you get everything in yeah, eastern societal pra practices and modalities right and and western too and then you see the k a lot of times for the direct jewish mysticism okay. um 
it's all very mixed up though. And that's not a rule you can, you can live by. Anyway, you asked what it's like to live in this. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, well I'm, I'm saying I, I, my, my impression, I guess I'm not trying to make any assumptions at all. Uh, mm -hmm. But as far as from what I remember, it does have to do with the tree of life. It does have to do with like the 13 so, or something. There was like the whole tree and the, you right. know, and the whole, well, it's like the triangle, the rectangle with the, with the triangle at the end that has all 13 spots, which actually is different parts of either the, the, the world, the universe and, and, and the human faculties um, involved with that. I mean, I have seen that. I don't know if that has anything. Does that have anything to do with the Kabbalah? It, it, it does. Um, the the tree came later uh kabbalah and mysticism came first the tree has evolved over the centuries right um right. but it is a representation of primary kabbalistic um ideas understandings and yeah and concepts. and some of us call it a um a filing cabinet for all the different ideas okay so each of the sephira on the tree um the the circles that you see and there's actually 10 plus one there's actually officially 10 sephira and then there's another sephira that's not a sephira that is that's a whole that's a whole nother class yeah. but um the sephira are more objective principles that we can all kind of tie into like harmony and and uh, the two foundational stuff all uh, these i these, these yeah, all of these ideas are on the tree, and we all have experiences that we can tie to that tree through those sephira, and what? then learn from them and and pull back on. Um, and there's a whole lot more to it, but yeah, I mean, there's I, a whole there's a whole tradition. Right, the tree the tree yeah. definitely is is a form that allows us to understand and study those principles one at a time, right. so that we can you know we're humans we in. experience right take it in, in 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 short bursts not you know in a whole scheme you know a whole grand concept right uh, right because honestly when i went through uh i did some hermetic laws uh, principle training mm -hmm. uh, with a, a hermeticist and mm -hmm. uh, i even at the end of the training i was so confused and right. and uh, you know i it, well i started looking online you know years and years later you know, they have a very, um, the best way to put it is uh, a very simple or sim simplistic version of what the seven hermetic principles are. Mm -hmm. I know that the way that they're truly explained, it sounds like more scientific, you know, and they use words that are more scientific to explain, you know, what's going on because it has right. the universe and the cosmos and, you know, and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But now... I never even noticed how, and I know we're getting off, off topic for a minute. That's okay. <laughs> but, um, I never noticed how much uh, of an importance it is to understand those seven principles in order to ma master the mind. I mean, ma master the human mind and ma master the self. Okay. The I mean, self. Yeah. The and, self, yeah. Yeah, not mastering of other people. I mean, you can use the laws and the principles in order to assist in shifting other people's perspectives and, and, sure. and their, you know, and their, um, uh, their, you know, perceptions and perspectives, but it, there's more to it yeah. than just that. It's not there to control other people. It's not there to teach you how to manipulate other people. It's there to control me. Right. I mean, not the system controlling me, but for me to learn how to Control live yourself. and be aligned with divinity yes. and all of that. You know, it, actually, this isn't off topic because this is one of my hugest passions oh, is, okay. uh, <laughs> is to I'm talk about this right and, and to teach. Yeah, but it's it's living this. I mean, reading books about it, studying it right. like you're studying a subject. That's all fine and good. But I don't think that you really learn what it means, what, what those principles, hermetic principles you're talking about, or what the tree means, right. or what, what it means to live by Kabbalistic principles until you actually 
live it. Well, look, I mean, look, you have to live it in order to assimilate the, the lessons. Yeah, and integrate into the, you know, the, the actual lifestyle. Completely. Yeah, in, in the routine of living within the guidelines and the principles of what, you know, what that's providing to you. And yeah. it's, it's the same difference. I know a lot of people say, well, what's the same difference? Um, but it's, it's, this, it's very, almost the exact similarity as some of the, uh, the metaphysical practices, such as like witchcraft and, mm-hmm. and, and paganism and the Norse beliefs, you know, with the, you know, the polytheistic, you know, belief system. I, I I never even understood how connected. I mean, at a little part of my my life, like in my childhood, I was very connected to things that had to do with like like Greek goddesses and gods, um, and I really didn't understand why. It was just fascinating to me. And then as I went into my life, going further on my journey, I noticed that it was more like Viking, more Norse, more you know, of that sort of Netherlands, you know, area in like Irish area, you know, with the Druids and the, you know, priests and priestesses and all that. And I, I was like, I mean, where is all this coming from? Like, why, why am I? And then, and it came in a treasure trove. I mean, it literally like what, yeah. was a dump truck, you know, and just like, it, it just poured all, you know, all into my life. But the more I know, but the more I get into myself, the more I learn, and this also has to do with hermetics, is the more that you begin to learn about yourself and and what really gets you motivated, inspired, like you like you're talking about your passions. Um I I'm beginning to see I am 43 years old, but I, you know, I am now in the late bloomer, but um but I'm beginning to see what's really important on a daily basis based on those concepts yeah okay based on those concepts and i'm telling you guys if if you ever feel lost if you ever feel like you don't have any idea of why you're here start off by by living and i know and i'm going to tell you exactly how to do it momentarily um, you know, start learning the seven hermetic principles and also the five Reiki principles as well. Okay, five Reiki like principles. That. They're very, very simple. And it kind of goes, I read the other day, it says something about um, it's, uh, this in the same direction as a 12 step program. You know, you know, when people in, you know, recovery places, uh, they always say, ju- you know, a day at a time. That's what they say. And it's usually said, ju- it starts off with just for today, meaning, you know, that I'm going to be present, omnipresent, you know, and, and this is what I'm going to be doing, you know, just for now, you know, yeah. within the now presence. And, and then when you start living in the presence, you know, in the now, it's life just gets better. It gets better. It gets more, more, you know, smooth. Well, I, I don't know that it always gets better first. <laughs> It gets better oh, eventually. I can tell you. I can, a little bit, but. I can tell you horror horror stories about people who got their first Reiki attunement after their first class, and their lives fall apart because that was what the Reiki was supposed to do. It was supposed to wreck their lives because they didn't have the strength themselves to correct the things that needed correct. Yeah. <laughs> and I've I seen mean, people like before before their life goes right, it goes terribly wrong. When but, I went, yeah, when I went through my um, my level three. Mm. Uh, the, the, you know to get the dicomo right right um i had no idea what was going to happen <sighs> and uh well after the it was it was challenging for months okay i'm yeah. serious it was at least seven or eight months almost an entire year another but challenges after challenge after challenge but what i learned from that was that the direction that I guess divine source, what you know, higher power, what have, higher self, what mm-hmm. have you, whatever you believe in, the direction in which it was uh, it was pointing me was to deal with things I literally brushed under the rug and for almost forgot about. Yeah. Okay. For for decades. Yeah. And, and I had to, he- it was so difficult to heal from those. I literally, and it, what I learned from it was one very important process. 
And anybody who knows about healing, anybody who knows about Reiki, anybody that knows about this modality, I know you guys are going to agree with me that you have to be able to forgive yourself first. Nobody else. It's not about all the other people. It's about forgiving yourself going through those experiences. Yeah. That trauma, you know, and stuff like that. That you, that you maybe you weren't as strong, maybe you weren't as resilient as, you know, as you would like to be. Maybe you didn't resolve this issue with someone, you know, that was really close to you and you know, it, it just made more chaos, you know, and it just, uh, like the ripple effect. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's just kind of stuff. It, it's just, wow. We're, yeah, we, we, passions, man, is, is one of the biggest things that I have too. Um, and I'm in the same direction that you are it, yeah. open people up. And these, these systems, all of these systems, and it's what it's, you find what you need, whether it's Reiki or whether it's Kabbalah or whether it's Christianity or whatever it happens to be, it, all these systems at their core are archetypal and they oh. all have the capacity to set us on the right course. As long as we're paying attention and we don't use it as dogma, as long as we, as long as we are aware that it's a healing path, but don't turn it into dogma. And so I'm a Kabbalist and I live by pretty specific principles that I screw up a lot because I'm an idiot. Well, we're, um, we're only, human, well, we're only part, partially human. I'm partially human, right, right, right. But I, I, you know, at the core is love. Right. And it's always recognizing which direction is the love right because because there are other directions that are divine love but they don't manifest like that in our lives oh, right no. and <laughs> it's all divine love at at its core hmm. but recognizing that there are ways to love yourself that are not so painful ways to love other people that are not so painful and so one of the things that has occurred through my life with my study of Kabbalah and with my living by these look for the love principle and be loving and kind, even when you don't feel like it sometimes, um, is, is this self ability to create my life. And so that's why I'm at where I'm at now of trying to help other people recognize and not, not telling them Kabbalah is the way, not telling them Reiki is the way, not telling them there is one specific way because there's not. And but opening know, their eyes to the possibilities. How do you now? I'm I'm going to ask you this because I I think that it's important, you know, with your passions and with your journey and stuff like that. Um, what it sounds to me, okay, what I'm gathering mm -hmm. is that you are moving. I should say moving. And so you know, everything's moving. Nothing ever you know rests. Stuff like that. Um, but you're moving in a direction of ultra coexistence in a sense wouldn't that be lovely well and and i always resonate with the coexistence field i do because when i started my path which i'm not going to get into a whole story but you know when i started my path i started at some pretty weird stuff to be honest i mean <laughs> at least at that time it was abnormal and strange now it's now not so much um, and again, it was witchcraft, druidism, paganism, Wicca, you know, things like that. Uh, in the church, I saw things as a medium. You know, I, I saw spirits. I had experiences even in church places of, of spirits that weren't even supposed to be there, you know, and, and they're showing up because of all the kids and we had wacky weekends, you know, and all that, you know, we had the weird color food and whatnot. But ultimately, uh, the, the path. And the path. I'm going to say this. I, I, I know not why I, I'm sharing this, but the path itself is never finite. Right. It's never, like you said, it's never, and I agree with you. And I just, I just put it in my own words, uh, which it's never finite. It's never locked in just to one thing. And, that, and that's so difficult for people to understand um, that are, into just one thing, which I, I actually had, I had to cut somebody off. You know, I had to purge somebody out of my life uh, the other day 
that's that said to me and her exact words were don't you feel that it's chaotic spiritually chaotic to be worshiping so many different things and i said no i don't feel that way because i respect each and every single one of them as much as the other so why can't i right okay i mean yes i i I do see the upgraded version of the black bible you know the black book bible niv or whatever you want to call it okay you know it says all one god you know money monotheistic kind of belief system and there's whole conversation you know after that but that it's not going to happen here (laughs) trust and believe i mean we may have you know conversations again or more set you know more episodes about these Mm -hmm. things and you know what we see as they are however i like the coexist idea i do because i'm open to listening to other people in other practices other modalities which i almost never was at one point because i was always you know witchcraft wicca gods goddesses it was always you know that's it you know, I, I don't want to hear nothing about, you know, I don't want to hear anything about anything else. If you're going to talk about another religion, walk away. Okay, that, you know, that's kind of like how, how I was in group settings, even virtual, for that fact. Um, but again, as I grew up, you know, grew older, I, you know, I'm more open to other ideologies because yeah. other ideologies kind of make sense now. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't have all the answers and then all of a sudden, boom. You know, all of a sudden, boom, you, you, you listen to another modality and practice and you're like, holy crap. Okay, well, yeah, that, that's the answer what, that I was looking for. And I couldn't find it because I was so closed minded. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And when, I, and when people are closed minded, that's what happens. Okay, well, the- fear of the unknown or fear of past experiences. You know, I'm, sure. I'm a recovering Catholic, like a lot of our my pagan friends, right? Recovering Catholic. Okay. Recovering Catholic, we call it. Um, and it took me a couple of years to come around to, oh, Catholicism wasn't the problem. It was people that were the problem. And there are some lovely things that um that I was taught as a child and that I still abide by. Angels. Um, all, you know, all this, all these beautiful essences and, and love to- thy freaking neighbor right? Uh, well, that, that's a good one. That's a good one. Now we got to teach, and I'm getting a little loud here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, folks, you heard that, right? Okay. You, you guys heard that? We got, we got to start teaching that. Be nice, be courteous, be empathetic kind. and sympathetic and kind, kind to your neighbors, man. Th- think about it. Kindness goes a long way. And also kindness is just like being courteous. It's contagious. Right, right. So if we if we make the contagion something that isn't paranoia, fear, anger, mm-hmm. rage, it's not going to grow. It's only going to it's going to transmute to the other yes. side of it, which is the po- the more positive side. Right. right. That's what, that's like I said, on. like I said, all energy is divine energy. Right. But there are some energies that feel a whole lot better to us humans. That's why. And- that's why we call uh, some of us. We call it lower base vibrational living yep yeah and that's what yep. all those other ones are the anger the rage the hate the the guilt the regret the doubt you know the disbelief all these you know all these negative words you know that are created and and what do we say well what do we say words are thoughts are things man words have vibration yep every word has an emotion and it cre- and it creates an energetic form so if you consistently use vocabulary that is negative, that's the energy you're creating. Yeah. And that's the energy you're keeping. Yeah. And a lot of people have to become, you guys got to start becoming hyper aware of this stuff. That's, and that's the whole, that's the whole thing is to be conscious of what we're thinking, what we're saying, what we're activating in our lives within and without and it's not easy because it requires some vigilance right it requires that we are always on some level paying attention that we're always acknowledging that divine flow you know go ahead go ahead i was gonna i was gonna add to that is that the autopilot mechanism 
is so freaking robotic. It really, really is that if you're, I, if it's something positive, don't get me wrong. Okay. If it's something positive, then just, you know, just keep doing it. But what I'm saying is some of those things that you're not really paying attention to that are subconsciously set in your mind as an action or reaction for, you know, for certain situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. If you're going to constantly live like that, and, and you, that's not even you being human at all, right. honestly. And it's just you getting used to a routine and, and doing it because it's comfortable. And the human faculty isn't about comfort. No. It's about finding balance and chaos. It's about living in unconditional love and being able to forgive people even though they're horrible to you. Right. Okay. Right. Give, giving to others when you feel like you don't even, you're not going to have enough or you're not going to be able to replenish, okay, what you give. It's all about getting out of that mindset entirely. Stop being afraid of being a human being, a real human being, because that's what's happening. That's what's happening. And gradually, as the decades keep going, I know, because now I'm 43, I get it, I see it. Okay. And, and, you know, you're, you know, you're a little, little ways older than me, but we, but we see it. I mean, we see the pattern. We see the pattern of disprogress is what I call it. I call it yeah. disprogress is because it's like down, like downsizing. It's almost like de-evolutionizing uh, the human mind and the, and the human heart for that fact. I mean, our hearts are huge. Yeah. Okay, we're supposed to care about other people. We're supposed to be there to help other people. Okay, what, what, in what dimension, in what realm could we literally be living in a world that is all about sustainability? Yeah. Sustainability, accountability, and, and progress. Right. And growth. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's where we have to reach to. That I mean, we keep going in this in this trajectory. Some of those movies you see on your, you know, on, on your, you know, TV square there, okay, that talks about the apocalypse and all this, you know, and all this other stuff, and and you know, a famine and pe pestilence and plague and all that stuff. That shit's gonna happen. It's happening now. Okay, it's happening now because why? Because of the lower vibrational frequency acceptance yeah we're accepting the lower vibrations folks but happening or not we have an obligation i think i think I agree. Um, that we're those of us who are aware and who are who have who are in the process of waking up because i don't think any of us are totally awake um but i think that we have an obligation to continue yes. to do to do what we can I, you know you're talking about the the autopilot and all that kind of stuff that that we get lazy we get you know right and i've always said that there are no gods or goddesses in any tradition of stagnancy exactly none of them are about stagnancy none of them are about being on autopilot not not a not in any religion in any spiritual practice it's right. never about stagnancy it's and it's not and right. it's not always about growth it might they might be about stillness but i gotta tell you even working with kwan yin holy moses she makes you work i believe it so so even even like you know looking at the buddha who is not a god by the way um looking he, at the buddha was actually a physical a physical human being is an actual God. physical human being <laughs> it's like a, it's like muhammad gandhi <laughs> right, right right but you know we we look at some of these uh god and goddess figures or higher entities who seem to be all about peace and stillness That's but they're absolutely. still not about stagnancy they'll make you work harder than almost anybody else well, and we'll look at the we'll look at uh, the the kung the kung fu traditions or the martial mm -hmm. sciences okay like martial arts okay uh, i mean think about that well i mean they're they're taught to become 
and this has to do a little bit with hermetics and you know absolutely they, they, bring, they do bring a lot of that hermetics into their practices and their beliefs and, and it's based on proactiveness it's based on doing the work it's working on yourself okay being mm -hmm. able to again master the self yep and master the mind master the body okay a master the soul you know things like that um which i don't know necessarily that you can master the soul per se but i mean i guess you can be on a level of of control in a sense um or controlled fluidity you know that's like a thunderous silence um yeah. but either way it's a situation to where i mean this is this is what we're talking about here this is our passions I mean, this is literally a place where humanity our not just it doesn't have anything guys please don't twist this up right. it has nothing to do with race color of your skin or anything that you may believe in that is spiritual in nature okay it has to do with you being an important part and playing your role in the transcendence in the i i always talk about evolution because i have i do have a quote that i made well a hashtag which it, which it says evolution is revolution okay yeah. and and it, and it is in order for, when we raise the bar when we increase our vibration when we increase how much love we're giving when, when we're increasing how much we show people around us that we care about them and not necessarily doing that like little flighty what do they call that uh, fair weather friend kind of situation you know or the or the friend of uh there's there's a word for it uh, offhand um it, it saluted me just then um friend of convenience okay mm -hmm. uh you know it once we bypass all that and we make substance of our connections our relationships with other people and animals for that fact well don't, don't, don't forget the animals okay the animals are always there <laughs> all right um you know some of us like dogs cats dragons whatever okay snakes and spiders and um <laughs> but uh all in all we have to look at all this. I mean, yes, there are going to be challenges. Okay, there, there, there is almost, I can almost guarantee that there is going to be challenges. Okay, especially spiritual challenges for those who are wanting to become more. Yeah. Okay, and that's because the universe, the divine, God, whatever it is, you know, whatever your higher powers are, they're literally going to test you to the brink of cracking they will yeah. do. okay just to see if you're ready oh oh you want to be shiny you've told you've told your patron god or goddess or whatever it is that you want to be shiny that you want to be better well let's go through this next uh you know 10 things that are going to crash and burn in your life because that's the only way that you're going to find new ways to be better right exactly exactly and i actually have and i know this, you're gonna laugh at me when i say this i actually have uh a, a, a i guess it's like a not really a mantra but it's an a, i guess a, a sort of like an acronym um it's called it's a, my thing is called the four r's okay and people are like four r's what in the world is that i mean that could be anything and, and i say all right this i guess this goes along the same similar guidelines as to the hermetic you know hermet hermetics and uh it says uh, it's just one one word each reflect release recreate and reinvent I like that. okay and people are, well this like i said i mean I've, I've spent 25 years you know to learning a lot of this stuff and saying okay well there's words as spells you know words as power you know what words are going to bring an impact into people's lives that are, that's going to make a difference and when i when you think about reflect release recreate reinvent that could be there could be a lot of explanations as to why that is what that is Okay, like reflecting on your life, you know, releasing all the crap, 
okay releasing all the negativity that you may be holding for yourself or, or you know holding for others big that's big okay holding, oh, yeah. holding for others and i mean still to this day i just i you know, i can say i don't like i loathe i guess you know a, a few folks but you know it doesn't mean that i totally hate them or i wish them violent you know violent deaths or whatever which i would never do um because i don't want that karma um but it's a situation where you reflect on your life you release what doesn't serve you you recreate a new life be by reinventing yourself mm -hmm. Does that, does that, does that kind of flow? Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's a good ladder, um, but it doesn't end. It just keeps looping no. back on itself. Cause it loop, right. It yeah, as, Once you're done yeah. reinventing, you got to re you got to reflect again. And then you, you keep, you know, you keep doing it until you find, uh, you, you know, the, the, the best version of yourself. And yeah. I mean, that's just, I guess that's how we're supposed, I guess I'm not going to say how we're supposed to live because that's kind of like a command and conquer situation you know i'm not trying to dictate what you know what you guys do but what i am attempting to do is just broaden your perspective yes they okay, broaden your perspective open you open you up to different ways of looking at life yeah you know yeah. At life energetically <laughs> spiritually mentally emotionally all of that asthmatic scientifically all that stuff is all you know all included all involved yeah and i love it when i get confronted with my own but also a lot of my my students or or you know whoever i happen to be talking to we talk about these high level concepts and how we're trying to live in alignment with with divine self whatever that looks like to you and then we start getting into the yes buts I call them the yes buts. That's like the you know, what ifs. What, the what ifs and the yes buts. You know, yes, I agree with you. I want to live in divine alignment, but I can't do it right now because X, Y, Z. Excuses. And okay. Absolutely. The yes buts are always out there. You know, people will say, man, I'd really love to be on the road like you and be a musician. And that was always a dream of mine. And I said, well, you can do that. What's stop? Well, yes, but yes, but I have to pay all these bills. I said, well, I don't my bills pay too. a lot of, uh, well, I pay the bills that I have, but I choose to have a lot less bills. Well, yes, but we need this and we, I need my, my, um, my TV subscriptions or I need, you know, I need this, right. I need that. I'm going, I understand that I, I don't have those things. I don't use those things. Mm. Um, I choose not to, in order to live the life that I want to, you know, and they'll say, yes, but, and they'll come up with 10 more excuses. And right. I'm like, if you if you want to live a certain way um you've got to confront your own yes buts you also you, have to make, you also may have to make some uncomfortable sacrifices yes but i was <laughs> sorry, i was going to start ah, my answer with yes but ah. <laughs> however they're not they're sacrifices for other people from their perspective but I don't see the way that I live as a sacrifice, as sacrificing things that I require. Well, what I'm saying is, well, okay. So no, I, I know what you're saying. I just, other people see these things as sacrifices where well, I drive example, a beat up car. Well, to, well, for an example, you know, no cable. Okay. Right. Something as simple as that, like no cable. A lot of people love sitcoms they love their tv shows they they cannot live without them they literally sit down on the couch and wait for that time okay and and that and again that's a, an expense that you choose i mean you choose to do that for entertainment reasons and that makes right. you feel a little because i mean me personally I, I don't really watch that much tv i don't um a lot of my times is either re you know reading stuff on like kindle or, you know, watching growth videos, you know, motivational stuff. There's a lot of things that I do, you know, to, to fill my day. Mm -hmm. But I, again, there are certain things that I choose as well that other people are like, well, some of them will say that I got a lot of time on my hands. And I, and truthfully, I don't because I fill my time with the things that I'm passionate about. 
Right. And that looks like it's not anything to people who don't aren't passionate about those things. As a creative person, I spend a lot of time looking like I'm doing nothing because I'm in my head. You're contemplating. I'm working on stuff or I'm writing down ideas, but it does, certainly doesn't look like I'm working because I look like I'm happy and right. everybody, everybody who works should be miserable and unhappy. Well, this is oh. my work and I'm absolutely happy about it. I was same thing with, with what I do, you know, with reading and the mediumship and, you know, the, you know, the coaching and things like that. I, I don't know where my life would be if I didn't do that. Honestly, yeah. like, I mean, I, one day, I, okay, I may, oh, I cannot believe I'm going to share this with, with oh boy. <laughs> um, okay, so throughout life, and I'm not going to lie about this, and this also has to do with like mental health and stability and things like that. Um, I was diagnosed with like five different things. Um, I was on medication for a, a good part of a, a large part of my life, uh, which I'm not now. Uh, but it was a, it was a situation where when I my very last day working for someone else um it was almost the same thing as you see on tv to be honest it's it's so cliche that it's funny um put it this way uh I, I had I was totally out of control uh with my balance like my life balance and my energetic balance that uh I was an angry person a lot of the time and uh, the last thing I remember was uh, being called into the Staples office. I was working as the easy tech, the lead tech on the, you know, on the floor for, uh, you know, for the computers and, you know, and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, that's a, it's a lot of work. It really is. Um, it paid pretty well. But I was called into the office because I kind of, I talked back to my boss so I was like in the middle of like five different things and I was trying to focus, you know, my, my concentration needed to be on, on the work, but they tried to like rail, like railroad me and railroad like my focus and, and wanted to bring me. So I went into the office and uh, yeah, I, I threatened violence surprisingly enough. And that was, I literally told the guy I was going to put him through the plate glass window, right. You know, right next to his chair. And, you know, if he kept talking to me the way that he talks, you know, was talking to me. And that was the last time. I decided to work for somebody because to me, see, there's a fear. There's a big, huge, you can relate to this big, and I know you can. Okay. And there's a huge fear in the in between of working for somebody and working for yourself. Huge. Because there's no guarantee that you're going to get paid. Okay. There, when you're working for yourself, there's no guarantee. That's right. It's based on the work you do, okay? And it's based on what, how you grow and, and how you reinvent whatever it is that you're doing, you know, to, to go with the times and the trends and, you know, and all these different things. So anybody who's feeling like they're in a tough spot and they feel like they, they, they want to reach out or they want to break that cycle of working for someone and stop making other people rich, um and in an s you know in certain you know essences and start making yourself feel like you're rich and it doesn't mean money mm -hmm. it, what it means is every single day oh man i'm almost gonna i'm about to get emotional in a minute okay, every single day having that sustenance having that productivity having that contribution you know, to either yourself or others around you and, and feeling at the end of the day that you've made a difference. Yeah. That makes sense. Raven, I feel that so much. Okay. I, I feel that so meant so much. Um, I am blessed with a family who loves me. They don't understand me, but they love me. I and I always have a place to rest my head. Even if, even if, everything I do goes south. You know, I broke my arm at the beginning of, at the, in the middle of February and all of a sudden all the work I had lined up had to go away while I'm getting this arm that I can almost move where I need to move it now. Yeah. <laughs> but, 
but I had a place to go. I mean, I immediately, right. I mean, on the way to the ER, I was on, I was on the phone with my sister and my brother-in-law and my son saying, Amazing. so this just happened. We're going to have to talk about some stuff. And, and it's, I am so fortunate, but it also means that I, I had to self-motivate right. for, yep. for what I'm going to do. And that has been one of my biggest worries and fears i'll say the word it's been one of my biggest fears is in fact before i left the day job when i was raising my son before i left that day job my biggest fear was that i would just wouldn't want to get up every morning and do the thing that's tough that i was not going to be self-motivated um because i wasn't going to have to keep him alive anymore and i wasn't going to have a job to to answer to right. every day and you know a, a tier of bosses the fear, and to, fear of laziness and yeah. very much that's huge in my mind yeah. all the time Complacency, stuff like that yeah that i i am like totally against those things <laughs> right right but those those are qualities in myself that i have seen in the past right and so After. yeah it's it's much easier to let somebody drive but i can't I can't let anybody else drive my life. I have to drive my life and I have to drive it in alignment with the principles that I believe in. And, and at the at, underneath all of that is unconditional love. And like I said, I am not going to say I'm good at it. I work at it every day because I have screwed up more times than I can count in my lifetime. But that's still where I'm driving. That's still and, where I'm headed. When we, when we talk about unconditional love, mm -hmm. I mean, there, and some people are like, okay, well, I, sh I you know, I give people love. Okay. What, like they always say, well, what's the difference between just love and unconditional love? Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that, well, my explanation is that there's two versions of love, only two. And one's conditional and the other one is unconditional. Okay. And what I mean by conditional love is, The best way to say it is kind of just like, you know, you got you asking for something for, you know, from someone in order for you to give of yourself. I mean, that, I mean, if you don't want to give it yourself, if we're crying out loud, just, just don't give. I mean, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's, just, it's just the way that some people are, but I'm just saying if, if it's deep down inside of your heart and in your soul to give. Even if you don't know necessarily at first what that what you are going to give, okay, whether it's time, whether it's like ear to listen, shoulder to cry on, you know, just a, a vessel to vent, okay, a guide, an advisor, maybe, okay, a spiritual help or help someone in spiritual health, okay, which is very, very important. You know, to most of us anyway, all right? So especially, except the atheists, because um, they don't believe in anything, um, which is totally fine. Hey. They, yeah, but they still understand selflessness. They, yeah, they do still understand kindness. Compassion. compassion. Empathy and selflessness, right? Their motivation might be different, but they still feel it. Right. They still feel it. And they feel it even more so when they're being given it. Right. Um, well, but they feel it all yeah. around, I think. I mean, I, I do feel like the, uh, and we always say feel, we always say feel because that's what, that's what's important for us is that we feel whatever it is that we're speaking about, you know, whatever it is that the, the point that we're trying to put across the mission, the, the, uh, the message, you know, to, to this, you know, to the world. So with this being said, story time, uh, I got one too, after you. <laughs> yeah. Story time. Okay. Let's hear it. Now, a lot of people don't know, and I don't really repeat my story a whole lot because it can sometimes be long-winded, but I can, I've learned how to do the short, short version, okay? So where I stood was at the age of eight, I was able to see, hear, and communicate with spirit, which uh, invisible friends, okay, that nobody wanted to believe. Um, once I hit about 11... I guess, after the separation and divorce of my parents, okay, um, a lot of things were unclear to me. Uh, I went to, you know, like I went to the church with, you know, with, with the family 
and the family was still fighting. It was just really, really odd stuff that like, I don't, I started not liking going to church basically because what they were preaching, my parents were not even portraying. Okay. Like seriously, they would just come home from church. I guess it was almost like the Catholic church where obviously you go into the pew, you talk, you know, you talk to the priest, you, you know, you confess and then you do 45,000 Hail Marys. Okay. And, and then you're, you know, and then you do you, that's your penance. Okay. But ultimately, I felt always different. I always felt like the black sheep. Um, I always felt different from everyone. It wasn't just one person or another or a certain group of people. It was, I felt different from everybody. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I always had this sensitivity that when I touched people, I could see things. I know Lyle, I was telling you this, you know, there's a lot of details I didn't give you, but um, like I could see stuff. I could see visions. I could see emotions. I could see experiences through people. And, it, and it's, it's hard to deal with that. It's, it's a very difficult thing to cope with, you know, throughout life because it's, it's very draining. And um, t- tried to work with that a little bit as I got older. Um, family didn't really accept me to be, you know, to be gifted. Um, They didn't really believe in any of that stuff, or at least that's what they said was that they didn't believe they were very religious people, but they didn't believe in somebody who had psychic abilities and, you know, and stuff like that. They believe that that was a gift of the devil. And, you know, I was in Lincoln Lucifer, if that was the case, which obviously was not right Um, and not accurate at all. However, um, I had uh, an experience when I was uh, like 13, 14 years old. I think I was in fifth grade something like that fifth, fifth grade sixth grade and um it scared the crap out of me to be honest um i was laying in my bed i ended up having a, a like a freezing room i woke up out, out of a sound sleep and something attempted to come into a locked room where i was in and it did um I'm, i mean i can give more details but just you know door open a little bit closed you know, because I heard creaking. I mean, I was numb from like, I couldn't move from like my neck down. And um, kept opening, shutting, opening and shutting, kind of like it was peeking, you know, peeking around the corner to see if I was, mm-hmm. to see if I was awake. And um, the door slammed wide open. It just flood, it literally floated over to me. It was nothing but like a black mist. Okay. Floated over to me. I felt two pinpricks on each side of my neck. I passed out. And then when I woke up, uh, you know, during the morning, it was only a few hours after the fact, um, I went to go, you know, shave my face and get ready for school. And um, <laughs> early on, I had hair, uh, you know, had hair, not just the top of my head, but, <laughs> but even, on, you know, even on the face, you know, it's Puerto Rican bloodline. So um, I, I saw the, I saw the dots on my neck. Mm. I started freaking out. Uh, I, I was out in the, in the kitchen, so, like smoking 100 cigarettes. I know I was really young. I know. I know. Do not tell. Don't. don't <laughs> me. Okay. I'm not saying that that's okay, guys. Okay. But what I'm saying is that I, I mean, I freaked out so much. I was shaking and, and I so I told my father what it was. Apparently his, he also had a, a, the, the same exact experience. Okay. When he was that age and so did wow. his father. Wow. So something was going on and uh, there's like a story, I guess, that has history with my family. Apparently the guys have some kind of experience that we can't really explain. Okay. Um, but then it, tra- it, it, but it changed up, you know, it, it changed up uh, right, well, a- after that, my abilities were, it felt like my abilities were a hundred times stronger. I mean, I could feel a lot more. I could see a lot more. I I had to literally drop out of high school in ninth grade because I could not stand hearing all those kids in my Mm -hmm. head. And I literally, I, 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 I literally cussed out teachers just so I could go to the print, be in front of the principal's office where it was quiet. Nobody even noticed what I did. And it wasn't me being a rebellious child. It was me wanting, getting away from that, you know, that, that, that's the, the multitude of, of sounds. It, it would drive anybody nuts. 
literally it screams and abuse and crying on the inside and you know just oh so many things so uh when i was in job corps things slowed down you know i was like 18 you know 18 19 years old and you know obviously some of my friends were a lot more open with me over time and then that's when a, another thing came to fruition was the fact that I kind of programmed myself to be a certain kind of person, a uh, manipulator, a uh, narcissist, a, uh, a toxic part of society, honestly, mm-hmm. um, you, you know, user and stuff like that. And um, I, I did Reiki. I started with Reiki and dro- and droidism. And uh, yeah, early on, we're talking. That'll about- straighten you out. <laughs> uh, well i had well the thing was i had a friend i had a really really good friend that was a reiki master and he said listen if you really want to to really feel better about yourself as a human being you need to start your reiki training and he goes i already knew that you're a healer i know that you probably have a family of healers uh that they probably never talked about and it's time for you to step outside of that box and literally find out who you really are. And I did that when I started my level one and level two, it was hard. It was some of the most difficult challenges I ever had in my life. Loved ones, friends, family dropping off the face of the earth. It's a total of 67 deaths. Okay. That I, that I had to deal with, you know, throughout life, um, being, you know, stabbed twice and shot once. Well, it was not, you know, it was not a good experience either. It kind of showed me about life, how precious life is and how important it is to do, you know, to do the right things and be there for the right reasons and things like that. And I said, well, maybe it's just the universe telling me, you know what? I think you've been through enough chaos. I think it's time for you to learn the real lessons that I was giving you to learn, not all this trauma. And all this, you know, negative things that you were learning, you know, the abuse, the, you know, all this, you know, different blunt force trauma in my head and all these different things. But then after a while, I grew to love everything I was doing. Everything. Uh, the third, like I was telling you earlier before we got on here, the, the third Reiki, oh my, the third Reiki level, I'm telling you, it was one of the, it was, it was so hard for me to pass because it literally has to do with self-control and self-mastery. And then I found out about Karuna Reiki and my jaw dropped and Angel Reiki and all this other stuff. And I said, is there really that many? And there is. Just like there's more than just the seven major arcana chakras. Okay, there's 22 chakras, main major chakras. Okay, not including the you know the the 72 the seven that we talk about. Well, the yeah. 7200 nadis and and the sub chakras right. as well. So, I mean, I talked to masters and the master like after I learned what I learned and I talked to some masters and they have no idea what the sub chakras and the nadis are. They have no clue. And I was like, wait a minute, you didn't learn that stuff? And they said, well, no, I was never taught that. I said, whoa, that's, I think that's probably why my foundation is the way that it is, is because I learned all that stuff before I got into doing any spiritual you know practices yeah you know and and a lot of people say well where do i start and what would you say to something like that like well if somebody came up to you and said uh you know what gina you know miss lamont you know i feel lost i i feel i i feel like i'm losing my mind i don't know what's going like what would you say to somebody like that um you know that's funny first of all I, I never have anybody call me Ms. Lamont, but <laughs> no, no, I'm just messing with you. It's, it's a subtle um, thing. My apologies, but no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, honestly, my technique is less about saying something to someone and listening to where they are. Okay. 
And so I, I would tend, if somebody approaches me and I've had it happen, uh, somebody walks up to me and says, I'm so confused. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I want to, I, I need guidance. Um, I usually will sit and ask very simple questions of them. Uh, we might pull the cards out for, for me to know what questions to ask uh, so that they can tell me their story in their own words, because their story is what is going to tell me what might be comfortable for them to start with. Because I always tell people to start from where they are. Okay. I don't, I don't want to hand them a full-blown system with all of these, you know, you know, 12 rules, 22 rules, whatever. I don't want to hand them a full-blown system and say, well, you have to do all these things because yeah. You know, most people aren't going to be able to do that. We, we need to correct one or two things at a time. And yeah. that requires time. Life is not a sitcom and spiritual counseling is definitely not a sitcom. No. Nobody walks, nobody walks out of the first spiritual counseling session going, Oh, thank you. Now I know everything. Oh. Mostly they're going to probably be pissed at you because you told them truth yep. or you made them tell their own truth, which is usually what I do. I, I ask questions and I listen deeply. And that's, that's my superpower is okay. listening. The songwriters that I think that's their superpower is listening to the world. So listening now, now listening, I do believe is a very important part. It's huge. Now I never really had the belief that listening was as important as, oh. as it is in the whole, you know, the whole grouping of what we do, okay? And what I have, uh, what I have learned is that listening is one of the, the most important part to all this and especially to helping people. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, I mean, I call it my superpower because a lot of times I'm not even, listen, most of the tarot readings that I've done in the last 10 years have not been about me telling people what's going on with them. It's, it's, it's a conversation that we have with the cards in between us right. and the cards tell me what questions to ask them because when people are, when people are speaking and telling their story, the number one thing that they want is to be heard. And validated for that fact. And validated, yes. But you can't be validated if you're not if validated if you're not heard. Right. And so I find that people telling their own story and being actually actively listened to mm -hmm. actually makes them listen to their own story more closely. Yeah, they tend to focus more on what they're saying or how they're saying it. How and how they're saying it, you know? And and we wind up generally, if they really truly want guidance, um, I might hand them some reading material, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or give them suggestions. And it might be something as seemingly innocuous as Jonathan Livingston Siegel, um, you know, because I, I, I loved his books and some of that stuff is amazing. Um, it might be, you know, I might say, listen, it sounds like you're really... Um, you're really focused on Eastern principles and you might want to read the Bhagavad Gita or, you know, or, or, you know, if they have, if they have an interest in something, you know, uh, maybe, maybe another way, to, I might recommend them to another healer who is in that modality that right. they're interested in, depending on what they're doing. If they want, if they want to approach tarot, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to help them with that part of their journey. Um, but I generally, I don't, tell them what to do so much as I listen to them deeply and then together we find a couple of things that they might do and it's it's again it's usually about where is the love in your life and where's the fear and let's get you turned right. around and facing and, and facing so that you can learn to receive that love just as much as you want to give it unconditionally True. To be able to receive it because you can't give something that you don't understand. And, and, you, what, and what you're talking about, it resonates a lot with me, um, especially the love part. Yeah. Uh, love, see, uh, I thought at one point, I can't, well, this, is, this is definitely a different episode. Um, <laughs> but, you know, a, a majority of my life, I 
and I've healed from this, but a majority of my life, I felt like I was never truly loved. Mm. And, um, I use, and I used, and I love sharing this because some people can relate to this is that when, you know, younger in my younger years, I would literally look out to girlfriends to fill that void. And it's, and, and that is such an unstable situation because you're literally reaching out to be dependent on somebody else to fill that, you know, to make you feel loved. Mm -hmm. And it's always good that, you know, that people show love, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that yeah. that's the wrong thing, but what I'm saying is that when somebody is so energetically depleted in that area, they become desperate. And, and I did at one point in my life, I became very, very desperate as to attempting to, you know, to, to, to grab on to that lifeline or I would say love line, okay, for that fact, um, from somebody else, and then try to fill that. And uh, I guess that's one of the reasons why a majority of my relationships never really worked out, was because I was overly intense. Um, I immediately, almost immediately, jumped into that serious relationship mindset to where it's like, listen, I want love, period. And if you and if you can't love me, I don't even want you. That's just that's just how. And a lot of those people are like, well, I'm just playing the field. I'm young, you know. We're we're kids. Like, uh, you know, we, we don't want to be locked down at fit, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, with one person. I mean, some people are okay with that, but a, a majority of of the population are not at that time, mm -hmm. you know, and. Love, it has to start with you. I think that's, that's, where, that's where I got confused. It had to start from me first in order for it to be reciprocated to me. Right, right, right. Because I'm, it, it, does that, is it, that, it, that makes a lot of sense, but I think that people d deserve to be loved, not well, in a romantic yeah. way, not in a romantic way, but I think that people deserve love just for existing just for being yeah just for being um i think where we get caught up and confused is that that love has to look a certain way yeah see we always put that that and those are the conditions guidelines. that we talk about yeah, yeah guidelines of how things are supposed to be or how it's supposed to be shown or right. you know okay you don't do this you do you know yes you do that you know and yeah. I mean, honestly, with myself, one of the biggest things for me was always the creativity part of it, you know, in a relationship. And obviously, you know, I've been more with my wife for 20, you know, 22 years come, you know, come November. And, um, you know, the one thing that you did that, that got her, you know, got her really in it, like in the heart space area was uh, the, the handmade stuff. The handmade stuff, forget just going out and buying, you know, buying something right. from the store or anything, literally using my skill set to make her something. And most of the time it was like a card or something, yeah. you know, like drawing it out, printing stuff out, using calligraphy, you know, and all that yeah. and ribbons and, you know, and little imagery and, you know, and stuff like that. And, and honestly, I missed that, you know, for a yeah. lot of my life because I used to write poetry for people at one point, uh, you mm -hmm. know, some of the people I used to date or what have you. And it never really clicked that I was ultimately doing that to express myself. It wasn't pointed to any one person or another, but unfortunately it was weird because, and I say unfortunately loosely, but it was like the people that gravitated to me because of that expression were the total opposite of what I was looking for. <laughs> that, that makes sense yeah. you know it was the people who are bro you know that feel broken it was the people who felt lost people who you know obviously with the abuse and the sexual abuse and the you know and the you know the tra the serious trauma you know in life you know rape or which i i'm saying this just to be open to say you know i'm i understand all those things and i know how serious an impact it can have on a person's 
ability to love. Yes. You know, and, and it's tough. It is. It was even tough for me. Because, I mean, you know, when, when you get rejected so many times with, with the people that you really, really want to be with, and they really don't want to be with you because you're a freaking mess, <laughs> okay, because that's what I was back then. Okay, I was literally an energetic mess. It, it, it does something to you, you know, and, and you, can, you can't stop yourself from, from feeling that out. Right. You know, in healing from that, yeah. because it doesn't mean that nobody loved me. It, it just, it just meant, but it felt that way. I mean, it, it, <laughs> yes, it, really, really did. it was like, oh my God, who the hell is going to finally love me? You know, right. and, and years and years and years and, you know, a decade, 15, 17 years went by and I was like, what the hell, you know? Um, and I know oh, well, I've had plenty of relationships. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bear, you know, bear away from that. It's, it's a situation where that's what I started to think of myself was that I was unloved, that I wasn't worthy of love, that, you know, anybody that came across me was toxic and, you know, just either wanted to use me as a tool or they wanted to just to use me as a, as a pillow, you know, to, to lean on or, or wall to lean on, I should say. And that was draining. That was a very, very draining to my, to every aspect of myself. Yeah. It was hard. I was always giving, 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 and then I was receiving nothing, you know, from, yeah. and I got greedy about that too. I got, you know what? And that's when I started to become conditional at that point, it's like, okay, well, you want this from me. Well, I want this from you. And if I don't get this from you, you you're damn well not going to get that from me. Okay. And that's, and that's just how that worked for a long time. I think even still today, I have slightly that, you know, that, that little mindset in my head. You well, know. we're, you know, we're human. And I think that conditions are part of that package. Yeah. And so, you know, conditional love is not necessarily bad. I think that we have to have healthy contracts uh, in like our relationships. Boundaries. I mean, yeah, it's like boundaries, standards. stuff. Absolutely. Like and I, so I don't, I don't, I'm not judging that behavior. Yeah. But unconditional love is so completely different from that. It just flows. It, just it flows. well, it does, but it takes a long time to understand it. And I, I mean, I still struggle with it. What listen, my story is so completely different from yours. Oh, it's, yeah. My parents loved me unconditionally. I mean, I'm I am not kidding you. They loved me absolutely. They loved my two sisters absolutely. They modeled that like every day that they were alive uh, for forever they they were always they were always not just there physically but they were there emotionally mentally they were wonderful people right and i don't even know how they learned that well my, i'm not saying i'm not well and just to clarify just real yeah quick, yeah yeah continue that. i'm not saying that my parents never tried it, right. it, it was just the fact that and both of them are past now so i can actually speak on this without right that. right you know, it was yelling at me because um, they really didn't even like for me to even open my mouth when it came to any of this stuff. Yeah. Um, it was a situation where my mom, my mom tried more than my dad. I will, I will give you, give it that. Uh, my father had a drug problem. So they're really, we didn't really know until later on down the road um, that he was, he even got addicted to pills too, but it, it was a situation where I guess it was, it was something that was built in the DNA for the guys, for the boys, you know, and, and all the males in, in the family where there was violence. There was always abuse in some way, mm -hmm. shape, or form. There was always, you know, d d some of it was to toughen us up, obviously, you know, as men to be men and, you know, things like that. The whole, you know, right, right, ideology right. of being a guy, you know, stuff like that. Always really strong. Don't cry. You know, don't ever cry. Don't let people know you were hurt, you know, and all right. those, you know, all those things, what I think is bs now but right. um but it's a, you know my mom showed i mean for except for those 50, that 15 years 15 year gap that she was like ghosted she just disappeared um yeah for a long time she did try and i mean it's... there there was a lot of love from her there was and that's why i always say that i feel like my mother was my twin yeah uh, not twin flame or soulmate or anything, but I felt like she was, she was me and I was her. Which, That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Which is really, really crazy. 
and I mean, we did a lot of things like she's, she, you know, she was a, a Leo and I'm a, and I'm a Scorpio, which are kind of like two totally different personalities. Yeah. But we were very similar in a lot of things that we did. Yeah. So, and, and that's, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. Cause you know, I, I, if any of my family ever watches this, <laughs> it's not the fact, I mean, no, a lot of our family did have a lot, a lot of love, but it was most of the time it was me. It was me that didn't accept it. It was me that rejected it. It was me that where it was very confused, mm -hmm. you know, with the abuse and what, you know, with all the men, you know, the mental verbal toxicity that was, you know, fed to me and stuff like that. I, I didn't even know at one point what love was. So I you know, felt like love was a, a thing that I would get if I did something. I mean, that's kind yeah, of, that's hard. That's hard. And see, I knew I was loved, but I don't think I understood how well I was loved. I mean, you were loved. I was, uber, I was I mean, uber loved. That's yeah. What, yeah. And you know, what's so funny is I think I was in fourth grade. The first time I heard the, the term agape, the Greek agape the, yeah, about, yeah, about unconditional that. love, brotherly yeah. love, that kind of thing right. where it's not romantic, but it's absolutely unconditional. Acceptance. love. Yeah, I spent, I spent the next 20 some years of my life working on unconditionally loving people okay. the guy on the street the person in the relationship and the closer it got to me the harder it was to do right it was easy to unconditionally love the guy on the street that needs 10 bucks that was easy to pull 10 bucks out of my pocket and hand it over it was it was easy to unconditionally love somebody that i didn't know and it got it got harder and harder, but I worked on it for like, I mean, I'm a serious, I was a weird kid. I mean, uh, me too. all through school, this was a focus. It was weird. It was a focus of my life. So I'm 31. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to go to brief, just briefly interrupt that for a minute. Okay. I was like that in the beginning of my life. Yeah. It was pure agape. Yeah. But because of what I experienced, it changed. It makes it hard, right? Yeah. Well, I, th I thought I was pure agape. I was working on it like consciously every day for, you know, from fourth grade until I'm 31 years old and I'm giving birth to my son. Okay. And the doctor, you know, it takes a couple hours to get the baby out, right? <laughs> yeah. And they, they put Jesse on my chest. And my first thought was, oh my God. I love you so much. And my second thought was, I've been doing unconditional love wrong for my whole life <laughs> yeah. because I don't think I can ever love anybody like this yeah, it, well, with this much power. It just, it blew my mind in that moment yeah. of understanding that absolute acceptance, I you know, it was, it blew my mind. And I said, well, I think I have to go back to the drawing board and I'm never going to unconditionally love other people, but I've got one. <laughs> right. At least you I've have got that. one. And it wasn't until then, I think in that moment that I understand the gift that my parents gave me because, because they really did love me unconditionally. Oh, right. And I don't yeah. think, I don't think I understood how, what that how meant. Much. Right. I, I didn't get it. I recognized it as soon as it happened with Jesse. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to suck at this. I've been doing this wrong forever. And, and when um, I, I will totally agree with, with, with a very serious part of that, um, it took a lot. And yes, family, if you watch this or you listen to this, please know this. Um, when my wife and I, mostly my wife, well, she had the idea uh, to, to find my mom again. Wow. Um, and we did. We found, we, it was so weird how it happened. Um, and it was just a kind of spirit of the moment, a very spontaneous thing that happened. Uh, it took everything that is good within me to shift after the first time talking to her for, you know, after that, it was extremely difficult to, because I felt abandoned. I can understand. I, I mean, 15 years, I thought she was dead. Okay. Like seriously, I thought she was gone. I, I, I grieved for her for like 14 days. 
because somebody told me that she was gone. And and I was like, gone? What do you mean gone? Well, what I mean, what I mean by gone? She's gone. She's no longer here. I, and I, I I lost it. I totally lost it. Well, after I, you know, after we found her, starting to speak with her on a, you know, on a regular basis, weekly, you know, sometimes even more than once weekly. Because, I mean, obviously she's retired, you know, stuff like that. You know, she didn't work. So she, had, you know, had a free time, a lot of free time. Um, I started understanding agape again. Because I, 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 I literally had to tell her, even though she had tears in her eyes when I said it, I had to forgive her and forgive myself first for feeling the way that I felt for believing that somebody said whatever they said, you know, about her being gone and stuff like that. And maybe I took gone as, as death, um, not necessarily just, you know, MIA. Um, and again, that was, that was hard. And I tried to share, and Hey, she, she comments on this. She comments on this, which is my daughter. Um, you know, to, uh, me, her and I don't really talk that much right now. And I attempted to show the agape, you know, to her and she rejected it entirely and i and i was like okay so i'll you know i'll, I'll give give her space give her time no worries you know because you know she's still young and uh you know she's turning 20 oh shoot she's gonna kill me if i'm if i get this wrong <laughs> turning 20, as far as i remember i think she's turning 24 wow. uh, you know, this november um she may be tw yeah 24 25 um again we don't really talk so it's you know i, I don't really keep track that much but um, long story on that one. But it's it's a thing where, uh, you know, your journey sounds, yeah. I mean, you got the chance. You had that opportunity to to experience, yeah, that absolute un you know unconditional love. But it even shifted more so when you had your own child. You know, and and I and I I can relate to that because having my 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 newborn baby, yeah. my hand, okay, yeah. holding her and feeding her and put you know and really looking at her and like singing to her, which I was terribly out of tune, okay, but I still did it anyway, okay, and looking at her, I said, "What is this?" Like I I, like, I didn't even understand that feeling. Right. Uh, feeling like no nothing's gonna mess with you i'm i'm here as your as your as your knight in shining armor i am here as yes. your shield i i don't even care if it may if it kills me you know yeah. i i will i will do my best and oh long story short i was kind of an absent father but it, it was you know because i was afraid i was yeah. afraid of love and obviously the whole thing the whole story just wraps into that you know and i and i did run away from it um but after a little while that's kind of like how i'm agape is kind of like how i'm living now yeah you know and i love to give i love i love to see smiles on people's faces you know i i love to to, to transmute mm -hmm. negative or negativity into smiles and gratitude and appreciation Maybe that's what, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily what you're aiming at. Part of, part of it is that, but I'm not, when I talk about the unconditional side of Maybe I don't like even know that, that thing. Maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we have glimpses of it. I don't think we ever get it entirely right. right. Um, you know, maybe some ascended masters have got it right. Um, I'm not so sure most of us get it right, but um, look, there's, I have a tendency to look for the divine in the natural world. Okay. And the only place that I have ever found anything in the natural world that I feel completely, completely is the extension of unconditional love in the manifest world, in the physical world is light because light travels until it falls on something and it doesn't discriminate. And it doesn't say, oh, no, you're too ugly to light up or no, you're not worthy of this light. If it if the if the light travels and in, in lands, it is going to illuminate whatever it touches and we can hide from that light. We can put ourselves in houses under roofs 
in caves to hide from that light. We can choose not to be kissed by the light wherever the source is, but the light doesn't choose to shine or not to shine. It is just what it is. It is what it is. And for me, um, that's, that's what I feel absolute unconditional love is. And what I felt and still feel for my child is there's not an option. There's not a choice. Right. I, I simply love him not to make him be anything or do anything or say anything. It simply just is an absolute fact. And I really sad to say, I love many people in my life and I love them as hard as I can, hmm. but I don't know how many of those relationships are unconditional or even reciprocal for that fact. And the reciprocal doesn't usually matter to me. Yeah, also, I, guess, I guess that's where <laughs> lately yeah. that's kind of like where I'm at is, is, am I getting anything reciprocal? I totally get that though, because, because especially for lots of relationships, you do need boundaries. You do need that kind of a thing. But I also think that love can exist even though there are boundaries, like love and trust are not the same thing. Oh, I agree with that. Totally. Trust is I, you know what? I've got dear friends. I, I love them. I have circled with them. I have prayed with them. I've done ritual with them. I mean, that's as close as I get right. sometimes to people spiritually, but some of them I don't trust. And so there are boundaries up. I yeah, don't trust I, them, but I love them. Yeah, if I can't trust somebody, I, I, I can't have them around me. That's just, yeah, just, I've, I'm, I, I just, cause see, I get it. I get it. As I mean, me personally, trust is huge for oh, me. Oh yeah. And and if and if I can't and trust and trust and believe, <laughs> I've had plenty of people throughout my life that I have trusted with every single aspect of my life that have literally grinded me into the ground and, and made me feel like, what the heck did I just put myself into? Like, yeah. No, I, I get that. I get that. Like that. And yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to trust. I have a, that's one of my biggest challenges, I guess, is trust. And it takes a while, a long time for me to trust somebody. It, it takes a long time for me to trust somebody too. But um, like I said, trust uh, is not I, love. I, I, okay. That would be a lie. Um, <laughs> everybody's like, oh God, <laughs> what do you just apocratize his own word? <laughs> No, what what I'm saying is okay. Just to be clear, yeah, is that it's not necessarily a trust issue. It's mainly a caution, a caution towards individuals that I feel that they are untrustworthy and dishonest. It's the feeling that I get inside. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally understand. Not, you know. On the other hand, there are people. You know, like yourself, for an example, where we, you know, where I was sitting on the porch with you having a conversation and my life became an open book. <laughs> okay. And I mean, I it's mostly an open book anyway, well, as of right now, because of radio shows, stuff like that. But, mm -hmm. but ultimately there's stuff I don't tell anyone because, I mean, except for those extremely trusted people. And I don't really have even my, and I'm sorry, Sean, if you ever watch this. Okay. I mean, even my best friend made me question trust because I found out a few things and I was like, okay, like he, he actually heard something from individuals that I trusted. And I was like, wait, that should not have opened their mouths, you know, to stuff. And I was like, okay. And that's got it. one of the reasons why I have a real hard time trusting people. I don't have a yeah. hard time loving people. I don't have a hard time loving people. It's, it's the trust that takes, and well, trust comes with respect. So, I mean, hand in hand. So without trust, there's no respect. Without respect, there's no trust. But I think that some people get love and trust completely twisted up they and do. think that they're the same thing and yep. they're not. They're absolutely not because I certainly have boundaries right. with a lot of people. And right. I, you know, I'm saying this publicly now, my friends know this, 
um, you might think you're one of my best friends, which you could possibly but, be one of my worst enemies. But I'm well, no, but I might still I have so. you. I don't, I don't think you ever have enemy. You don't have. But, I don't think. Uh, I've got folks that don't like me a whole lot. <laughs> okay. Um, but <laughs> hard to believe. <laughs> but <laughs> I keep most people an arm's length away from me. Oh uh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it's like you know, stay out, stay out of my three feet of you know my three feet of space. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Wants. Yeah, I, I, I tend to, I mean, I'm open with people. I'm straight up about an awful lot of stuff, okay. but yeah, I still, I still keep people, you know, a, a little bit away from me, except for a small handful of folks who really, really, really know me. And I think that that's pretty much the whole look on society at this yeah. point. Yeah. I know, I know it's kind of sad to say. And I got to, sh- and again, I-, I love sharing with people how I feel about these cer- certain things. And I mean, chivalry needs to be rekindled. It-, it really, really does. I mean, there's, there are still people that do it, but mm-hmm. it's a lot less than what we think. Um, uh, and also courtesy, being courteous to each other and, and, empath- and, and empathetic to other people, because I, a lot of what I see is people that are always out for themselves yeah and that's sad really because we are one we are a collective like if we're only out for ourselves we are literally cutting ourselves off yeah. from everything all the all the opportunities all the the, the beautiful meetings of people and the the conversations and the dialogues and the lessons learned and all this stuff. It's like, you're, you're, you're like hermitizing, you're, you're, you're hermitizing your soul. That's right. what you're doing. Right. Okay? And I mean, don't get me wrong. Intro- to be an introvert is okay. But what I'm saying is hermitizing being that you're literally keeping yourself in spiritual solitude. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not, it's not right for, for a human being at least this is my opinion okay it's not right for a human being who who feels the pull to helping other people to being there for other people to advising or suggesting or again opening perceptions you know of other Mm -hmm. people to helping them in the worst possible times of in need Mm -hmm. i mean literally i've seen people crying on the side of the road and nobody stops yep i'm like well, come on seriously and then me i'm walking on the highway and i tend to see that one person and i have to sit with them for a little bit say hey mm-hmm. what's you know, what's going on is everything all right and they're like well who are you it's like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey hey like don't don't start there let's not start there right Okay, let's not start in you being afraid that a total stranger is coming up to you and asking you if you're okay or, or what's, you know, what's wrong or what's happening or how I can help. Because that fear is, that, I'll, I'll tell you, that is humani- humanity's hindrance. I hear you. Okay, it's like humanity's wall. That, we, that that humanity has put up because of all the violence okay and, and all and all the thing you know i mean look look at all the deaths and murders and stuff i mean that this has probably been the, the the worst couple of years that we've ever had it's it's rough and yet i i think part my, of necessary maybe i i think that very often things need to be broken before we can evolve yeah and evolve other, otherwise we get stagnant otherwise we're going oh this works for me i don't care if it doesn't work for anybody else right and there are societies just like individuals evolve but in order to evolve they often have to break and be vulnerable right. and it's going to look awful listen a snake sheds its skin every time it gets too big for it right Not so and- does a spider and so does the spider. And in those in that time when that shell or that skin is off and the the new body emerges, 
Molten. They are incredibly, incredibly vulnerable. Yep. And everything is worse for them in that moment. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, and, I do. Yep. And so I, the optimist in me, the spiritual optimist that I am. I have it too. I want to believe that all, everything that we are seeing is a side effect of our growth and our evolution as individuals, as families, as, you know, groups, as humanity on the whole. Like where, like where, I want to believe that. I mean, what, and this, this is something recent that's been kind of like rubbing underneath of my skin, if you, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. well, whatever happened to family? I mean, honestly, like there's a lot, a lot of what I see these broken families and and it's and it's like a staple it's like a staple in this people look okay i can't believe i'm about to say this but guys folks learn how to have a real relationship with someone before you decide to make it official (laughs) i got you seriously I mean, no, I, I see so many more breakups and divorces lately than I've seen in the last 15 years. We have short attention spans because our lives, and I'm talking in generalities now. Oh, go, go, go. Our lives, our lives are media driven. Yeah. Our, our attention spans get shorter and shorter. We think for some reason that life should look like it is on social media. And we all actually know that it's not. Oh. We're all we're all looking at everybody's perfect lives, and so we think we have to have that too. Um, we've stopped living um, in a conscious manner, and we're letting the the things that take our attention, and we're giving all of our attention to. I mean, we're look how popular out. like re- reality TV has become. I can't even watch those shows. They break my heart, right? Reality TV, but it gets everybody's attention. And that's so what everybody is. Because you're watching somebody live their life. Right. On, right. On, on real, on, 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 on the but it's, TV. It's just. Yeah. Instead, but, but, but those shows. Yeah. But those shows don't focus on the good things that happen. No. They literally put people in difficult positions. They don't let them get enough sleep. They feed them alcohol. Drama and all the drama drama. that could be possible in in their lives is what they show. Yeah. And and it's interesting because even with the interviews with some of those people, Mm -hmm. I see I see the outside interviews at times. Right, right, right. And usually they say, well, not and not our whole life is not like that. Right. Right. And, they, but, and they, that's their point too, is like, I wish that they would show the love, the caring, the, you know, the helping each other and stuff like right. that. Instead of all a, a, a mix of, you know, mix of the two would be great, yeah. you know, and seeing the, the balance. Sadly, what we wind up focusing on is then what we also see in the world's like, if I buy a red car and I haven't been noticing all the red cars in the world, all of a sudden I'm noticing noticing all all the the red red cars cars because I'm driving the red car. And so people who are into drama, all of a sudden that's what they're focusing is all the drama. My, my biggest recommendation is go put a tent up in the woods for a month, turn everything off by yourself and be by yourself or with someone you love. If you can live with them for a month in a tent. And I'm, 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 I'm absolutely serious. I find so much peace at festivals because I'm in the woods. I'm unplugged a week at a time. You know, I would, I, I have, when we lived in uh, New England, mm-hmm. uh, we had options to, to go to those Ren fairs and, and all that stuff. I, I've never been to one, honestly. And I know that I would get, I would feel so much of a connection with all the individuals that are there. And it maybe even become, maybe one day become a part of it, which would be pretty cool. Like a reader or, you know, somebody, yeah. becomes, you know, with the cool, with the inspirational clothing or <laughs> you know, stuff. So it, again, it's just being creative and maybe somebody would want to, you know, would hopefully want to buy something, but also my stuff is the message. 
Yeah, gotcha. Clothing is the message. Okay, like that ascent, like what I was talking to you. Right. Ascend, evolve, integrate, unify. And people are like, people saw that, they were like, oh, and but the letters are too small on that shirt. That's why I'm just going to put like the four words on the back of the shirt. That's all that's going to be there. Redesign. Yeah, well, just that. And then on the front, there's going to be, you know, something else, but, and maybe one sleeve. But ultimately, I feel that we need to begin to reassess what our role is in life just in general because i mean do you want to be part of the problem do you or do you feel like you've just been dropped into that role okay yeah. that's that's happened to a lot of us mm -hmm. right where again with the drama and the, you know and the arguments and the non-resolution you know no, no resolves and you know all these different things you know begin to happen in unison or you know in in uh you know in sequence but ultimately, what we got to see is our place. And, and I've, I see my place now. I mean, I know it took me probably 25 years to see where I am. But now I do. Mm -hmm. I do, and I'm not afraid of it. I know it, it's hard to, to not be afraid of it. I'm, I am serious. <laughs> when I, like, there's days that go by that I look at my bills and I say, at first i used to say oh man it's coming so close to the date uh, you know this and that and i always used to complain about you know not not making enough now i look at the bills and i say oh all right well universe do your magic yeah, do, do whatever you got to do i'll do the work i'll do the work i'll go online i'll go live i'll do whatever i got to do you know but you just help me out you know and you know let me flow no, no, that's always people's, a lot of people's challenges living in flow. And, yeah. and that has to do with their archetypes, you know, and they, you know, their personality archetypes and what they believe themselves to be, you know, do you believe yourself to be a backstabber? Well, then you're going to do backstabby things. I mean, that's, you, that's kind of how that works. You know, do you want to be a leader or control everybody? Well, then you're going to be looked at as a narcissist. Okay. In some way, shape or form, you know, unless you're a leader, Okay, not necessarily in control of everything and everyone, but you're a leader and people, you know, people follow you, you know, follow your lead, which is entirely different, you know, than, than being a narcissist. But, and you just have to ask that question. Yeah. Who are you? And, who are you? And, are you? Like, what's, what's your role? Not, and not only who are you, but who do you wish to become? Uh, it, because it, you can change it. It, it can absolutely be changed. Took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah. Took the words right out of my mouth. And that's actually something that I teach a lot, a lot in coaching is that you really need to know where you want to be in order to plan out where you're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's how that works. And, and people are like, well, I don't know where to start. Well, okay. Start at the beginning. And people are, oh my God, you know, how many people say I'm a smart ass for that? Okay. But it's not, it's not being, it's not being a smart Alec. Okay. What, what, what it is, is that sometimes the, the vision, sometimes the idea of where you believe you are or where you think you should be going mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. Oh, and that's fine. You know, and it changes. And it, normally it changes based on your choices. And I always say this to people. Okay, are you, what are you going to choose? I always say that to everybody. What are, what, well, you got a choice to make. Okay, well, how do I choose? Well, all you have to do is choose. I mean, that's, you know, you got to, you got to agree, make an agreement with yourself that that's, a, that thing is important to you and go in that direction. You, and, and stick with it. You know, don't, even if it's toxic or it doesn't work for you and, you know, it doesn't resonate, get rid of it. Right. It's that simple. But people, they, they lock in, they hold on to these, these toxic uh, routines, like, you know, daily routines. Um, I, I, I started to, um, I started to, uh, <laughs> shut up guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, the practice is what you preach. Um, 
<laughs> so that's what I started to do was pra- was practice what I preach. Started, you know, meditating every day. You know, I started, Damn it. You know, I started <laughs> yeah, started, you know, breathing techniques. I started doing, you know, a little bit of, of movement, you know, movement breathing and stuff like that. And and uh, clearing and cleansing. I shoot, I haven't consecrated my house in like probably two months and you know and blessed it and and everybody's like well what the hell are you doing you're, you're telling us to do it you know once twice three times a month and you, you you know and you haven't even done it yourself and it's because my focus is not always on that uh but but now it is now now it definitely is and w- with that i i just feel so much better i do i mean not not as just a, a human being i feel better knowing that and being confident that I'm doing what I need to do in order to be at the optimal energy level to assist other people. Be the best version of you that you can be. Yeah. And, and give yourself a time, give yourself a chance to recharge. I mean, a lot of people, that's all their their freaking lives are, man, is, is, you know, go, 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 go. And it's like, three years of it or 10 years of it and then they and then they just crash yeah okay and they don't give themselves a chance to sleep but but no judgment because sometimes that's who they are right there are people that are wired that way i'm not wired that way i got a lot of friends that are wired that way and some family members that are too that are so busy in their own lives that they have like not even five seconds to, to talk to somebody and and that's kind of like where that's where we discussed the right. whole like me feeling loved and and all that and i did have i mean i blocked pretty much my whole family i'm not gonna lie I mean, my whole my whole family except for one aunt that i have uh because all the rest of them just don't even bother and so you don't even bother having conversations with each other and it's like well if you're not gonna spend time for me how am i gonna give you time in my life you know to you know to be there for you and then mm-hmm. that's that's how that that's how my mentality is is like well equal exchange if i'm gonna love you i'm i'm hoping that that love will reciprocate or be mm-hmm. reciprocated and if it doesn't it, it it does it affects me i mean that's i, I want to be filled with it you know i want i want to feel it every day in treasure troves you know like i was talking about the dump truck okay <laughs> dump truck of love is just pouring all over me okay like, like a, a pile of sand not suffocating me but in, you know but having me engulf myself in it you know and that has to do with that exchange i mean yes be be what you want to want to see in life i do believe that i do at times it's difficult absolutely at times it's difficult to show the world a better side of what it can be i always say we know stuff we know this metaphysical stuff right we know all of it but yep. it takes it. it takes a long time to know it here we need this like it's a spiritual gravity where it's got to move from the rational part of us that knows stuff to where we emotionally feel it and we can live it and you know and then embody it and what and what and sorry nick nick cannon if you ever see this Okay, this is props to you, bro. Okay, he says it the best. And I know you said something about TV shows and sitcoms, but you know, yeah, yeah. Nick Cannon's got a TV show. He says it's like the best energy on network television, which I do, I totally agree. It's really, really high energy. Um, and it's all positivity. Cool. Um, but he says if you feel it, you can heal it. And and I and I never really understood those words specifically until i started remembering when my mother passed and i said wow you know what she used to give me so much information uh, just about life and and to and how to live life that i'm surprised that she didn't live any better than she did and i and i was in shock by it because she was that agape you know that right. agape woman that wants that wants to literally give love to everything and everyone and was open about it oh my stars was she open about it and even if she didn't get it in return which would bother somebody like myself 
But even if she didn't get it in return, she didn't even care. What made her feel whole was just giving it. Wow. Regardless. And I, and I, and it's hard. I, I don't know why it would be so difficult for me to do that because I have, you know, I, but I'm, I'm under the impression it's mainly because of my past and, and, and what, and what's, ha what did happen to me and possibly what, what's still happening, you know, in my mind or yeah. like in my, in my soul or in my heart, I don't really know. And again, it goes with the trust. It, it goes hand in hand. Like if I can't trust you, I can't love you. That's just, yeah. it, you know, it, I mean, maybe that's, is a little shallow, but because my love run, I mean, I, I'm not, a special kind of love okay like i'm not you know i'm not higher or superior kind of love that to anybody else's i mean love is love but what i'm saying is in order to gain that intensified very pure very powerful essence for me there's we gotta be tight i got you really I got you. really tight to where it, like i'd be there for you till death and vice versa Okay, yeah. in order for me to do that. Um, but I'm being a little bit more open. I'm being a little bit more open now. And it's it's being a little, a, a, actually a lot easier for me to, to share that and to share, you know, be open with that love and about that love. That's cool. I, I think also that different stages of our lives, we have different focus and definitely different perceptions and different things that are important to us. And as I have aged, I learned that I... I'm a lot more relaxed about some of the things that I had a lot of rules about before. Yeah, me too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so hopefully that doesn't change. Hopefully I continue in that direction because that's I, the I direction would, I want to walk. And I believe that. And I really, really do. And I guess that's the reason why I wanted to, I, I want to create that nonprofit, you know, organization to be able to help, you know, no kill shelters, you yeah. know, home, you know, the homeless, homeless veterans, you know, all these things that seem to not really be a focus in any government official's capacity. I mean, that's, and I'm sorry to say that, and I hope they don't, you know, they don't ream me for that, but it's, you know, because there's freedom of speech, but I'm just saying that I don't see that as a focus. I see that as like, a la almost like a last resort. So, you know, sitting on the back burner, waiting for somebody else to do something about that and i think we as a as a spiritual community should be the people that are focusing in that area they deal with the indian you know the what is it uh the you know they deal with the commercial stuff they deal with the corporate stuff they deal with you know uh the microeconomics you know the the macroeconomics you know all these things so let, let's let them you know let them do what they do with that stuff is crappy or as good as it may be okay and we focus on the things that will help level out our society as a whole why can't we and then and then it's because of the trust issues it's because of you know the fe the feelings of fear you know i mean i i literally talked to five people not too long ago about the same thing I just had a, I just had my treasure quit and we didn't even get started yet. Okay. I mean, seriously. And I was like, well, she just was, I guess she must've been taken on too much or whatever it may be. But again, your life, anyone's life is based on choice and you have to be able to be aware of the options that you may have, the pros and cons of each choice, hermetics, okay, seeing above and below a situation, okay, right. so you can find that little, that, that nice little medium, that comfortable in between. That sweet spot. Yeah, that sweet spot, right, and that sweet spot could be tough, it could be tough, or sometimes it could be easy, it depends on you. And I love the fact that again we're going to say this, and then and then we'll uh, we'll wrap this up because I we've probably been here about two hours. Um, <laughs> hey, I'll put the this whole, has been so great. I'll put the whole thing on YouTube. It doesn't matter to me. Hey guys, just <laughs> FYI, YouTube, uh, go smash that subscribe button. 
There you go. Yeah, give me a th- give me a, give us a thumbs up. Absolutely. Okay, comment on the video if you want. All right. Let us know if there's any subjects you want possibly her and I to discuss, or you know, what, do you want to find out what our opinions are? Okay, or how we feel about certain areas and certain things. It could be anything. I don't care at this point. It could be anything. Um, even politics and religion, the shit that we don't and we're not supposed to talk about in public. <laughs> I don't want to challenge that stuff, okay? Only if you really want to know. <laughs> I mean, only if you really want to know how we feel, right? Um, so again, um, we're going to say uh, to, to look up uh, Gina Lamont's information, what she does, how she rolls. Okay, we have mamaginamusic.com. Mm-hmm. And then we have mamagina.bandcamp.com as well. Okay, so again, she does, she also does readings. Okay, she, maybe you can book her a gig or something. You know, what, whatever it is you want to do. You want to sponsor her, I would highly recommend it. Okay, um, but as of this point, I would say, uh, you know, to everybody, Thank you for sitting in for so long, for one. <laughs> Hopefully you watch it to the end. Um, and uh, be humble, be blessed. Uh, again, I keep saying this, live in the vibration of love. Yeah. And take care of each other. Yes. Okay, I know. It sounds awesome, right? Um, by all means, uh, if there is anyone else, and I, I normally don't do this on, on the video, but if anybody else has gotten to this point, I would like to offer a chance for whoever you are to become a part of the, the radio show. Be a guest, be a co-host, whatever you would like to do. Okay. Whoever you are, spiritual path, you feel lost, you feel, you know, you feel like you need guidance or help, we can bring you on the show. We can see what we can do to help. Okay. So just feel free. Shoot me a line, email, phone, message, text, whatever it is. You got a way to contact me anyway. The whole channel has everything there. So uh, just make sure that you, yeah, subscribe, like somewhere down there. Uh, make sure you check the description because we're going to have those links in there too. And, um, you know, and love and light to everybody. So mm-hmm. I, what's Gina, you have anything to say towards Just Gina? thank you for the conversation. This is, this is. I love a good conversation and this was it. Raven, thank you so much for having me. All right, guys. So again, this is your host, Reverend Raven Nightclaw HP with the wonderfully gifted musician and psychic, I'll call you. Um, and, and I'll just say gift, <laughs> visionary, <laughs> anything in between spiritual healer and, uh, and, and coach as far as from what I can tell, uh, you know, uh, Gina Lamont. And uh, till next time, guys, peace. A high frequency channel where source and spirit meet in tandem, where forces between the mind, body, and spirit meet in friendship while building a unity of energy and creation, fluidity in consciousness, where we let our spirits speak.